Would I lie to you? BBC One It player shares got a habit Netflix search for a miracle cure channel for all. For sick note Sky One Marie Berry's country house secrets BBC One I player since former Labour shadow Chancellor Ed Balls endeared himself to the nation on Strictly Come Dancing not so much dancing as flailing about like a plucky injured penguin, he's become quite the fixture on the light entertainment circuit. While he's not agreed to go into the I'm a celebrity jungle in the manner of ex-Scottish Labour leader Kezia Dugdale, I feel a terrible compulsion to add, yet, to that statement. Last week Balls appeared on the first episode of the new series of Would I Lie to You, singing Endless love, karaoke style, with a trade union friend, Billy. Well, I say, singing, it sounded akin to a suicidal Darth Vader opening a vein. Balls needs to realize that when showbiz types say, break a leg, they don't mean that you should sound as though you have actually just done so. Was it funny? To borrow an unfortunate phrase, hell. Yeah, however, Balls' unlikely transition to Mr. Showbiz isn't without peril. Perhaps it was no coincidence that this happened to be a particularly lively, quick-witted, silly, surreal edition of WILTY featuring regulars Rob Brydon, Lee Mack and David Mitchell, with Joe Brand, David Baddiel and Kimberly Wyatt. Even before Balls opened his mouth, Mac was quipping, Don't let me down, you've had years of practice. At some point it felt as though Balls had merely exchanged one bare pit for another. At others it bordered on poignant as Balls related a story about talking to the home office on the phone. While rescuing his children from a ball pit, he kept describing the political problem at hand, as though that were the most important detail. Pissed, Ed, it's not anymore. Does Balls miss politics more than he lets on? Right. Now, on the showbiz pantheon, I'd place him somewhere between Pudsey the Bear and the time that Congolese cab driver Guy Goma was mistaken for a tech expert and interviewed by BBC News 24. How much more, showbiz, could balls go? And still retain enough gravitas for a parliamentary return? His post-political career has been all about being a great sport. Few could deny that the surgical removal of the Westminster broom handle from his posterior was startlingly successful. What happens if and when he tries to put it back in? Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, the mesmerizing, do you and a wise in Spike Lee's update of She's Got a Have It. Photograph David Lee Netflix when Spike Lee's film She's Gotta Have It was released in 1986. The heroine Nola Darling's unapologetic juggling of her multiple lovers was deemed fresh and original. All these years and Tinder swipes later, perhaps not so much and it was Lee's challenge to address the changing times in his 10-part Netflix. Reboot Lee directed all the episodes, while also expanding characters and themes, against the backdrop of an increasingly gentrified Brooklyn. With all but to do, it's little wonder that the opening episode came over as a little stiff, earnest and overstylized. However, a few episodes in SGTHI had more than warmed up. In the crucial role of Darling, Do and Wise, was as mesmerizing and nuanced as the role demanded, I consider myself abnormal, but who wants to be like anyone else? And while times have changed, Lee's touch remains sure with SGTHI. He's delivered a quirky, why, sometimes angry but always celebratory brew of not only black activism and defiant feminism, but also 21st century individualism. The Search for a Miracle Cure was a brutal, illuminating documentary. Following lawyer Mark Lewis, he represented Millie Dowler's family, and others, in the case that ultimately brought down the news of the world as he traveled to the Hadassah Medical Center in Jerusalem to undergo radical stem cell treatment for his multiple sclerosis. First diagnosed in his 20s, Lewis, now 50-something, is struggling with walking and gripping and likens his life to an egg timer. The sand is going through and it's going to finish. Lewis's frustration led to uncomfortable scenes where he was seen venting at his partner, Mandy, his metaphoric punch bag. Elsewhere it was impossible not to feel compassion as he underwent the grueling treatment, experiencing first the tearful euphoria of great results, followed by still encouraging but less spectacular progress. Throughout, Lewis was militantly positive about beating MS. This is a trial that I'm going to win, which was as worrying. Did he need to be more realistic? As it was humbling. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Pitcock, Farce, Rupert Grint in Sick Note. Photograph Ray Burmistonsky UK in the comedy Sick Note, written 
by Nat Saunders and James Serafinovich. Serious illness is the mechanism for Pitcock farce. After being misdiagnosed with cancer by the incompetent Dr. Glenis Nick Frost, slacker Daniel Rupert, Ron from Harry Potter, Grin decided to keep up the pretense because it stopped him getting the sack. Don Johnson enjoys himself immensely as a monstrous employer and dumped by his girlfriend, Becca Pippa Bennett Warner, who's been having an affair with his best friend, Ash Tolrogan Meffin. The third episode opened with Daniel inadvertently responsible for Ash being in a coma, with disasters piling up like pancakes, and he and the equally clueless doctor bumbling about like circus clowns hitting each other with foam planks. Sick note has already been commissioned. For a second series Lindsay Lohan will play Johnson's daughter, which works for me. The performances are great and there are plenty of laughs in the escalating twists of surrealist failure. The first episode of Mary Berry's Country House Secrets concerned itself with the life and times, grand balls and historic recipes of High Clear Castle in Hampshire where Downton Abbey was filmed. Of course it did, though it would be nice, and even more educational, to see Mary visit a rural council house to see how an ordinary family lives and cooks. The hour passed in a blur of sublime interiors, genial aristos, quilted jackets and berry rustling up bygone dishes, including something called gamekeeper stew, which resembled a first World War trench that you could eat. I'd love to tell you more, but I fell asleep, lapsing into a nightmare where Downton's butler, Mr. Carson, was thrashing me with a whisk and ordering me to scrub the scullery floor. In fairness, Country House Secrets was executed extremely well for those who liked that kind of thing, though for me it whiffed too much of my pet hate, for lock-tugging TV. I always think the BBC needs two out, I'm sure these programs sell very well to markets such as America, but they could end up having to offer a free frontal hair transplants with a license fee.